Oh, hey, old dad here. And this is One Ton Sass Actual. Now guys, typically we take things pretty serious around here. But every once in a while, well, we like to cut up. And hey, who doesn't like a good bit of fun? Welcome back. Darn it. Running a single stack 1911 chambered in the 45 AARP is a lot like running a PSA carbine. It's kind of fun to shoot until your friends catch you with one. Listen, Cody Curry here, and this is 110 Sass Actual. If you've ever been caught up in a heated 1911 versus the world internet debate, well, you have come to the right place, sir. So welcome aboard the FUD ship, and I promise to dodge all the icebergs this time. Unless, of course, you haven't liked, you haven't subscribed, or you haven't commented yet, then full steam ahead. I'm looking to make a home at the bottom of the Atlantic. Quick thing I want to touch on for you guys. This channel is and always will be 100% self-funded, meaning my opinions and my hot takes on any single item that I feature here on the channel are not paid for. This is a hobby for me. I shoot five days a week and once during that week, I bring a camera and play dress up for you guys. My opinions, no matter how garbage you think they might be, will be of my own hot garbage opinions. Being self-funded, I pay out of my own billfold for the weapons and ammo on my own private land. If Knight's Armament, LMT, or whatever brand shows up on this channel, it's because old dad just wants to shoot some real cool stuff. And the opinions that I spew are gathered by exactly how I feel about the weapon, not a check coming to my bank account. If you'd like that, cool. Keep on watching, King. So what in the two World War winning hunk of solid forged steel oozing in tacti cool and flat dark earth drip do we have here? Well. This is the Flim Flan Boondoggle Rip-Off Clone, the I copied your homework and changed the answers up just a little bit, t sas M45 A1 Raider. We're talking some real muscle, baby. But what is an M45 A1? So let's rewind this. In the year 2012 AD, the US of A's very finest brass of the United States Marine Corps decided it wasn't time to pull the life support plug off the legendary John Moses Browning design 1911. In a time where ultra reliable double stack 9mm pistols were wildly available, the Marine says, nah, no, we're good, bro. Give us that single stack stoss chambered in the Lord's caliper that is 45 ACP. We don't need no baby little 9mm with all the metric measurements. We need 0.45 inches of star spangled solid bald eagles and freedom. With that, the birth of the M45A1. What you have is really just a modernized original 1911. What you get with the M45 isn't anything really that revolutionary compared to its grandpappy. Its key components that make it more modern and usable is its integrated rail on the frame that allows for mounting of weapon mounted lights and laser aiming modules. A fantastic upgrade really, because being able to see in the night, well, it's pretty rad. It also features a dual recoil spring system. This is unlike any of the 1911s of previous centuries. The dual spring allows for a much more pleasant recoil impulse as it dissipates a lot of that energy of that tiny little explosion in front of your face much more efficiently. It comes with a three dot radioactive tritium night sight. So don't go breaking them open to season up your crayons. A five inch national match barrel and an ambidextrous safety for you wrong handed folks and tacti cool FDE Cerakote finish that will have all the bad guys sweating when you pull up on them with that bad Larry tucked into a leather shoulder holster. So you're full torqued, right? Well, so are the Marines. 
so torqued that they ordered a contract for 12,000 of these freedom dispensing machines and issued them to MARSOC, Force Recon, and SRT teams. Well, the fun, it kind of stops right there. In just four short years later, the year 2016 AD, the Marines had announced that it was going to phase out our beloved modern World War winning machine. Pour one out for the homies. They stated it totally had nothing to do with the reliability and they were going to replace it with the Glock 19 from a logistics standpoint, of course. While there are definitely some folks still lugging this thing around in the military, the Glock 19 is far more prevalent. So why such a short lived life? Four years is a very small service life considering we've been using essentially two pistols for the last 80 years at that point. Well, let's talk about it. In October of 2012, the first 4,000 of these pistols were delivered. By July of 2013, the USMC had already issued a laundry list of problems with this weapon. The first major issues with the M45 were cracking frames. Only after a few thousand rounds, which is an incredibly small amount for a service weapon, did some of these things literally fall apart in operators' hands. Not a good look. The original finish, Cerakote, it held up Pitiful. It wore easily in holsters, it chipped, it cracked, causing the bare stainless steel frame and slide to be exposed to all the elements. On top of all of that, operators were still experiencing stovepipe malfunction issues. So like, not very cash money, bro. By the year 2015 AD, the USMC had fully agreed upon terms on how to address this flop of a firearm and Colt submits a proposed engineering change to substitute an ion bond finish in lieu of their Cerakote that had the durability of a 3 a.m. Bush light infused rattle can bender. While Colt and the United States Marine Corps discussed ways how to fix this batch of 4,000 plus pistols, the Marines said, bro, all right, enough is enough. So they laid their gigantic socks on the table and said, listen, y'all have two options. Give us a fix for these boat anchors or pay us $4.2 million. So on May 11th, 2015 AD, Colt submits a proposed engineering change. What happens next? Yeah, that's right. On June 15th, 2015, Colt Defense LLC files for bankruptcy. Whew, what a wild ride. So yeah, that's what this thing is based on. So let's talk about the TSOS Raider. It's pretty much, well, it's a spitting image, extremely close. So first things first, it's a fully forged steel weapon, while the original Colt M45A1 was stainless steel. That's actually really hilarious because forged steel is stronger and harder than stainless steel. You have Novak three dot iron sights on the TSOS, which is also funny because it's the same manufacturer used for the real Colt 45A1. The TSOS features Colt 70 series internals, which is really just some very minor tweaks for safety things versus the 80 series, but not crazy important. I went ahead and yeeted this pistol across my range for science, of course. to show the hammer didn't fall under impact. So we have it here, the TSOS Raider. But how does it feel? How accurate is this thing? Well, gentlemen, I gotta say, I am absolutely blown away by this thing. First things first, these pistols set you back like 600 to 650 beans. So naturally I was expecting some serious lack of attention to detail. You know, some like rough edges and stuff, some uneven wear spots after lots of firing, a few malfunctions, a disgusting and gritty trigger. No, none of the above. I'm genuinely shook. At the time of this video, we're up to 2,360 rounds. By the time this video is blessed by the YouTube gods and premieres live on your screen, it'll probably be closer to somewhere around 3,000, I would guess, which I get isn't exactly a ton, but after breaking this thing down, wear and tear inspection, I can honestly say I am wildly impressed. During this time, we experienced a total of three malfunctions, stovepipes. This is my surprise face. But here's the thing, all of which happened with the supplied magazines it comes with. And I only ran them for maybe 100 rounds or so because I knew they were going to be problematic. I realized they were destined for the scrapyard because, well, they're made in Italy. So clearly there ain't any bald eagles in them, which I feel directly attributes to the reliability feeding. 
So no problem, I have quite a few 1911 mags on deck. For this video and all of my shooting with this weapon, we ran Chip McCormick and Ed Brown mags for this gun and PMC bronze 45 ammo. And with those mags and ammo, Literally, not a single issue. The trigger isn't anything really to write home about. While I'd still take it over 99% of all stock striker-fired pistols, it could use a touch of work, but come from a guy that dumps brand new Knight's Armament two-stage match triggers immediately for G-triggers because they have a tenth of a better performance. I'm just a trigger snob. I'm very critical of triggers. The stock trigger, well, it will absolutely serve you well. It's a solid four to five pound break. It has some decent travel for the reset. It's still a very serviceable trigger, but I really can't complain. It will do you well. Accuracy wise, I really can't complain either. I'd put it up against any factory production pistol, sub 1000 bucks, eight days a week. No, you're not gonna be winning any national matches with this thing, but you're definitely not making barn size groups at 25 yards with it either. Now the overall fit of this gun, it's very surprising. It's actually pretty smooth. It doesn't rattle really at all, but it's just loose enough to run much longer than like a custom fitted 1911 without stripping, degreasing, and oiling again. And like I said, it's wearing very evenly. It's a solid in-spec pistol. As far as the finish goes with the Cerakote, it seems to be holding up okay. There's definitely some small wear and tear burns, you know, with just a little bit of holster wear, but I can say the coating looks and feels solid. I don't think really it's gonna be something, you know, 15 years from now where you have used it a ton and it's gonna look brand new. It's just not gonna be that way. Again, but for the cost of this weapon, uh, it's very surprising how well it has held up. You know, there's no blims, no bubbles in it or anything. The only real issue I had with this weapon, aside from the stock magazines, which, well, you need a pitch and get you some real magazines, is the grip screws. Around like 500 rounds, they start to back out, which really is no big deal. A baby dab of Loctite, and it's no longer an issue. Lockup on this gun is crisp and solid. The slide stop, safety, and mag release all feel very solid with no crazy over travel. Also, a quick touch on the optic here because I know some of you guys are gonna ask about it. These do not come milled for a dot from the factory. I sent this out to DSC Gunworks to have Dawson Precision plates put on it so that it would accept this RMR. Not that the factory irons are garbage or anything because they're definitely not, but I just like dots on my pistols. They simply work better for me. Overall, I'm really just blown away by this thing. You know, I figured the gun tubers that were promoting this thing were getting their pockets lined from somebody, distributors or something to talk about this thing. I'm not sure. But after swiping my own credit card for this thing, running it until I had to set it down from heat and yeeting it across my range, I can absolutely positively say with 100% confidence that there is absolutely not a better 1911 out there for the price. I'd even step out on the ledge and say it's equal to any 1911 between 1200 and like 1400 bucks and below. It's not often that I'm blown away by a gun. Maybe it's because it costs a little, maybe it's because, you know, the real gun, you know, it's cloning was a complete flop and this thing actually performs better than that. I can't quite say other than King, you absolutely need one. There isn't a better bang for your buck 1911 out there than the TSOS Raider. So gentlemen, that's a wrap. Be sure to tell me in the comments how much you hate this gun or how much you love this gun, how much you hate Turkish weapons and how it doesn't compare to a real cult. I don't care. I just want to hear about it. Subscribe, like, and we will see you next time. Thanks.